So this is the last day of your life that you'll ever purchase any glassware. Why? Well, this is why. So this is a jig that I made a while ago to take glass bottles and cut them evenly and turn them into drinkable wear like this. So it's an upcycle recycle project. Really useful. Now this is a let's see, let me get you a better shot. So this is a uh, I'll give you the dimensions later, but this is what you can end up with, right? These bottles are everywhere. They had bars all across the entire planet that have liquor. And they throw them away every day by the millions. So you can actually just go get this from them. Sometimes they give you a hard time, other times not so much. You gotta keep trying a lot of places. Well, not every not every place has a high end vodka, so either way. I chose these bottles because they look really nice, nice pattern. When you cut them off, they look great. All right here is a um, another bottle. See, I like the frosty look, and um, I chose this because I wanted to get a nice image, uh, appearance of a, of a glass when I was done. And uh, this is a ginger juice, ginger beverage. You can purchase this from like high-end uh, grocery stores. Well, that's all it is. And you get this. The next step you want to do is the labels. These are really challenging to get off. So we'll try a couple things to try to get this off. When we're done, we should have a somewhere around there that height. Because that's where before it bends glass. Now here's the problem. There's some limitations to this. You can't cut bottles that are square or regular with this jig. It just won't work. So only only bottles that are like round. Okay. Uh, you're gonna need some uh, extra pieces of wood to kind of pad it. You know, sometimes the uh, the, the diameter of the bottles too uh, too wide. Okay. But uh, either way, I'll give you the dimensions for this, and then uh, I will uh, we'll get building. So an important part of this project is the, the most important. It's this glass cutter. Now, there are two types, right? There are ones that have uh, the cutter on the very, very first, on the very, very front. And there are cutters that have it up top, like this one. So. What you want to do is find one with the cutter at the top here versus at the very, very front right here. And this one I got from a large, very large store, big chain. Okay? And uh, there's two of them that's in competition. So you're going to get this from the Home Depot. And uh, the other chain has has the other glass cutter from the front. You don't want that one. Uh, <clears throat> anything else? Yeah. Let's talk about it. So one of the reasons why I use those Grey Goose bottles is because uh, they don't have any labels on them. You know. So we're gonna try to remove this. We're going to start off with the least toxic way first, so we're just going to use the heat gun. Right, it's going to heat this up. Well, that worked out really well. Right, let's see if we can get this off without heat. Alright, so it doesn't look like heat really matters. Or maybe it does, I don't know. Yeah, it helps a little. It sure does.
So at this point, right, we need to try to kind of figure out where we're going to, uh, I guess, uh, cut this, right? So let's go ahead and uh, clamp this down. So when you do this, it's really important. You want to score, just making a score line, right? But you don't want it to be... You don't want to go around two times. You just want to go around one and one tenth time because as you go around the second time, you introduce some in inaccuracies. So, just want to kind of nope. Get one more. I think that'll yeah. One more and then, yeah. No, it's touching it. Okay, so. Those three stacked together is just going to bring this right up to there where we'll touch it, right? So we need to make this a consistent cut, right? So we are going to right there, right? Like that. Come up a little bit more. Give us a little bit of room for error. Yeah, right here. Like right there. That should work. And then we need to do that. So you see what I'm doing? Just kind of make sure this bumps up against something. Okay, so you can see here, all right, the... So the... Oh, it's a little blurry. I think it's blurry for you, either way. So right here, we have the very, very tip of the uh, glass cutter. Just It's going to score it right there, all the way around, all right? And it's right before we get to the drop off, right? So we have this jammed right here against the back. That's going to keep it consistent. So we put another bottle in. We don't have to remeasure. They're all going to be the same height. And then top, the three pieces of wood stacked against each other. And then we just kind of jam the bottle back against this and then clamp this down to make sure it's squared off because you don't want a wobble as you turn. So it's squared off now, right? Well, the next thing we're going to do is score this. And so what I like to do is just to help me with uh, like how far did I go? Did I get it? Is I'll, I'll put a line here. Okay. And... I'll use that as my reference point, like where I start. All right, so I had to move this over and some more. All right, this is going to be probably not a good cut, uh, only because the um, I, got, I did get a little score and mark on it before. But anyway, let's go. Let's try. All right. Uh, I also adjusted this here to make it more stable. So you put the smaller piece back there, bigger piece up front. It's going to hold the uh, workpiece a little bit more stable. Okay, so here we go. All right, I would say put on some safety glasses, little pieces of uh, glass don't hit you. So I'm going to like turn it towards me. Yeah, there we go. We're scoring now. Yeah, I can see the mark. Whoa, 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 oh, man, what did I do? I gotta pay attention. Jesus. Now, this one's not gonna go well. Hear that, that scratchy sound? That's a good sound. Okay, so that's scored all the way around. I went around way too many times, so this one's probably not gonna go well when we pour hot water on it. So let's get another one. Remember, you're probably going to get about a 75% success rate with these. So don't beat yourself up. And if you uh, want to increase your success rate with the ones that you want at the very end, start off with the bottles that you don't care about. You know? 
start off with the ones you just don't care about first. Put that mark to help me know that it's going all the way around. turn. Alright, so we'll do the others here. Let me get to see how, uh, what's my success rate going to be. Oops, I forgot to mark this. You know, I'm marking it just because I don't want to go around too many times. Let's do this one proper. All right, ready? Let's do this one proper. Let's go like that. And then we want to go right here so we know that's where we're starting. I'm pushing it inwards and that way at the same time. Right? And I'm turning towards me. too far. There you go. And that's scored all the way around. Okay, so I'm not, I can tell you that I've, I've done this before with a kettle because of the way the kettle has a spout. It just works a lot better to, uh, to kind of get the uh, hot water concentrated in the same spot. So one of these is going to be a nightmare. We'll figure it out right now, won't we? All right, so I have uh, some hot water that was boiling. Yeah, there we go, you're getting steamy, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour that hot water right here. So, just a little bit. I'm gonna heat up the, where the crack is, turn it. You see that you notice that I have a pot underneath because I want to catch that hot water and reuse it, you know. So just want to heat up the uh, where the crack is. Now some people will say that you can use just the hot water from your sink to do this. I don't know. I've had more success with the. Uh, Boiling water. Alright, let's see if we uh, have enough. So, cold water. There it is. Alright. See that broke off. But that's no good. See it failed? So, this one's a, this one's a loss. See that right there? But other than that, it broke pretty nice. It was a good score, but then... But then that happened, right? All right, so we're 25% uh, failure so far. So let's uh, pour this back out. Let's try it again. I said one of them's going to be a little easier than the other. So, and sometimes these things crack just from air. All right, cold water. There it is. It's cracking. Yeah, oh, this is not a good one. That's a shame. To 
some glassware, some bottles here. Glass are a little bit easier to, to, to break. They break a little straighter, you know. Alright, well, not the end of the world. Give it a try. I think this was a, we could save this one, you know. Okay. Not so good. All right, so this one has a stress fracture all the way around. Yeah, this is gonna. Yeah, that's that, that's not a good one. So you see, it's already cracked right down the middle there. Yeah, so this is a failure. We're at, we're at a 50% failure here. Tidy stress cracked right here and right here. So this one's a no good. Uh, it, was, it was breaking nicely, but then that just didn't work out well. All right, well, there you go. We only got one out of all of these. So that's this one here. This is, this is doable. It can work with us. All right, so we got a... Um sand the edges. So I usually do this outside because there's a lot of like glass particulates that get airborne. So use your respirator. Don't fit your safety glasses. Let's put both of those on right now. And uh, this belt sander is going to uh, get rid of the uh, bulk outside glass, which is what we want to smoothen out the edges, right? And then uh, and then we're gonna come in with the Dremel to get the inside edge. Just checking to see how soft it is, how eased over the corners are, and that feels really good. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, well that's it. So let's talk about how this is constructed. All right. So I took two pieces of plywood, same length. All right, I cut them down to be the same length. And I needed a back plate, support plate, right? This groove right here, I cut this with a dado bit. I mean a dado, uh, not a bit, a dado uh, blade. So it's a, it's a blade that you put in a table saw, and it spins back and forth like that as it's, as, I mean it oscillates back and forth as it cuts, and it gives you a channel at the end, right? You can control how thick this is going to be. Um, again, I just matched it up to the width of that. I'll give you dimensions later on when I uh, show you. Yeah, when I give you, uh, well, I'll give you the dimensions later when we put this together. Okay, so I just did that on both sides. Uh, I, th I think I did it on this side also because I was like, if I have a glass that's really, really small, something really small to cut, 
I'll have this side versus having to stack a whole lot of stuff up, you know. But I never really ever use that side, so this side is the only side I used. And then on the back, over here, I just screwed it in. And then I also glued it down, so. And that's it. That's how you make this jig. Really simple, easy to use. And uh, again, this is a top cutter, so I cut some here. The blade is up top, not in the front. So you want to get the blade that's up at the very top. And uh, I don't really have a brand name on this, but I'll tell you. But anyway, check the link, and I give you the uh, a link to the uh, part itself, okay? To the tool itself. So, hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I uh, hope it was fun for you to see this process. I hope that you get to use more of your glassware that's just easily tossed away all over the world. And uh, they're so easy to just convert to to something drinkable, you know? So i um, really happy I got to share this with you. And I uh, hope that it helps you do the same for your glassware adventures. So uh, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, maybe give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you think there's something we could have done better, let me know, okay? And I just want to add a little bit of in, in extra information. A lot of the stress factors that come down has a lot to do with, like, if this is, go if you go around too many times, it kind of, like, the little bit of offness can cause the, uh, if it's, like, down a little hair, it'll, like, crack downwards this way. Sometimes the glass is just weak going this way. And also, if you heat it up too much, like, way over here, you end up with a situation where um, if any there's anything that's compromised over here, is gonna, it's also going to crack. So, so that's why you want to concentrate your heat along the line that you score. Okay? All right. That's it. See you later.